What's up, gamers? Wait, that's not my intro. Hi guys, Maggie again, and welcome to my first vlog in four years. That's right, last time I made a vlog, I was a baby. Now I'm a full-grown child. Adulthood is a lie. Because I am desperate for content, but far too lazy to come up with anything original, I put out a call on my socials and I asked y'all to ask me questions about life and music. I was just searching for my phone to ask questions from, and then I remembered I'm recording with my phone. At a smooth brain moment. First question comes from my friend Audrey, who asked on Snapchat, Wait, you play music? I play music? I thought this was a cooking channel. Abby asks, I love you! Abby, that's a fantastic question, and after deliberating on an answer for an extended period of time, I have come to the conclusion, I love you too. Olivia asks on my YouTube channel, how long have you been playing the guitar and what got you into it originally? Somewhere out there in my family, there is an old picture of little two-year-old me walking up to my uncle who was playing guitar, and apparently I was just fascinated with it. I was plucking at the strings and he was changing chords for me. And, uh, I don't remember that. But what I do remember is when I was 10 years old, my pastor gave me a hand-me-down guitar that his daughter didn't want, and it was pink, and it had a heart for a sound hole, and there were Hello Kitty stickers all over it, and I have it hanging on my wall right now. Hold on. This is her. She still has the same strings, and you can... You can see the faded paint spots where we peeled the stickers off. <laughs> so I brought that guitar home and I went to my brothers and I begged them to teach me how to play guitar. My brother Josiah found a song, taught me the two chords it needed, and walked out. And I learned from there. I found books, I found internet tutorials, and eventually I found myself teaching the same brother who taught me originally how to read guitar tabs. Crazy. So. Officially, I've been playing guitar for eight years, but I've never really dedicated myself to practicing regularly. So I'm not as good as most people who've been playing for eight years. But I know enough to stumble through the songs I love, and that's all I need. Let's see how out of tune she is. <laughs> Kyle from my Snapchat has two questions. Number one, how are you doing? Number two, and are Irish spuds better, or are Soviet spuds better? Well, Kyle, I was doing fantastic until you asked that second question. Obviously Irish spuds. Who do you think I am? A more broad question, um, Rebecca on Instagram asks, why do you love music so much? Well, music has an incredible power. There was a sign in my high school choir room that said, words are to thought as music is to emotion. Written word and speeches allow the writer's thoughts to be heard and understood by others. Which is cool and all, but music allows emotions to be felt. The emotions of the composer, the emotions of the performers, the emotions of the conductor. It's amazing. It's like music is a USB cord from my heart to your heart, transferring data to let you know how sad I am, or how happy I am, or how Irish I am. In short, I love music because it's powerful and it's communicative in a way that I can understand and I can use. What recording software and hardware do you use? Well, and none of these are sponsors. For video editing software, I use Filmora. And for audio, I use Audacity on my laptop and Cubase AI 7 on my desktop. I got Cubase as a free download when my dad bought me my first audio interface about four years ago, and that's a Yamaha Audiogram 6. It's tiny, but it's all I need. I got my mics then. I have my Shure handheld that I'd use for live performances if I ever did live performances. I have a Blue Yeti, which was a gift from a friend, and then... I have a Behringer C1 condenser mic that I use for pretty much everything. It's my baby. And I love her. And then for video, I use my phone. It's a Samsung Galaxy A6, and the normal camera doesn't focus anymore. So I film everything in selfie mode. 
Speaking of selfies, at Montana Jace on Instagram asks, Just seeing your life over the internet, it seems to me recently that you've had a glow up just with everything in your life. Would you agree with that assessment? And if so, why? Thank you, Montana. I think I have had a bit of a glow up and for various reasons. Partially, it's because I had a jaw surgery back in March and I finally got my braces off after two and a half years. So I'm happy with my smile now. Before jaw surgery, when I smiled, you see my upper gum just entirely and I kind of looked scary, at least I thought I did, whenever I laughed or smiled. But now you see my teeth <laughs> and I am very happy with that. Also, I guess this glow up has been a symptom of just growing up. I grow up and I glow up. Why didn't anyone tell me? I'm finally out of high school and I lived on my own at college for a few months and I've really been able to find myself. I grew up in a rather hick town with big trucks and big boots and big hats, but my college is in the city. So I was able to finally be separated from my country roots and figure out who I really am. I'm finding a balance between living for the Lord and for my own happiness and constantly helping others. I used to worry about helping others and making sure everyone else in my life was happy too much to the point where I was neglecting my own well-being. But not anymore. I've given myself the attention I need to be physically and mentally healthy and I'm really glad that it shows. Thanks, Montana. Abby asks, this is a different Abby. This one's my sister. With your religious background, do you feel compelled to write only Christian music? Or do you think there is a balance between Christian and secular music? Also, do you tend to avoid writing overtly explicit music? When I started out writing, when I was 10, I did really feel like I could only write Christian music. But also, that's all I wanted to write. I want to write songs about things that make me happy so that I can in turn make others happy through the knowledge of salvation through Christ Jesus. And I've never found anything that makes me happier than my faith. At the same time, I know that Christian artists can come off as a bit intimidating. And I don't want to be intimidating because if I'm intimidating, then no one's going to ask me about my faith. So yeah, I try to find a balance between secular and Christian music. I think of it as singing about the blessings that God's given and also expressly thanking God for those blessings. I do both. And to answer your second question, I do that by avoiding making overtly explicit music. It's not something that I would enjoy making, first of all, and also it just doesn't give glory to God in any way. Explicit music would throw off that balance I'm trying to achieve. I really look up to bands like Switchfoot and Need to Breathe. I feel like they've successfully found that balance. I hear God in all of their music, even if they don't say his name in one of the songs. They present God's glory plainly in specific songs, and then they continue to appreciate it more subtly in their other songs, if that makes sense. And that's what I want to do. Hopefully, I'll start to set aside time to do just that and start making more original music. Or maybe I'll record some hymns and call it a Christmas special and upload it. One thing that I'm really wanting to do, so keep an eye out for this, is I want to recreate some of my old songs and arrangements now that I know how to use my voice better and how to use my equipment better. Poor Wayfaring Stranger and Will the Circle Be Unbroken? I want to go back and redo those. If y'all want to be notified of my upcoming content, be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell. It would make my day. And if you want to comment, I'll probably respond. Thank you to everyone who asked me questions. I love y'all dearly, and I will see y'all in the next video whenever it is. Bye. You leave me glowing after every date. I'm brighter than the sun when you're around. You fling me right up into space. Then you let me safe on the ground. People say the moon landing was faked, but no one can deny how high you make me.